All right, hello, Stu Crew. How's it going? Um, if you're new to my channel, um, my name is Amber Stewart. I'm the owner of the Stu Project, where I help people maximize their living potential by simply taking emphasis on wellness. And um, today, I wanted to go over your emotions because it is around the holiday season and a lot of people are going to be around their family members it's the end of the year so it's just stressful over all and um you really need to understand the importance of um how your spirit um interacts with you via your emotions and um your sacral chakra is um ideally the um is the energy center related in your chakras that um, relates to your emotions. So I'm just going to go over a few little um, notes um, just to let you know a little bit. Um, so first of all, <clears throat> to understand um, your relationship with your emotions is very important. And um, if you are a spiritual person and if you understand the chakra centers, then um hold on here's the levels of your chakras and your sacral chakra um is your second energy system is your second energy center and it is represented by the color orange now this sacral um center focuses on the relationship we have with our emotions which is very important because um, our relationship with our emotions directly influences how we experience um, our everyday lives. So um, if you want to understand how you interact with the world, you need to understand your emotions behind your perception of everything. And whether or not um, your sacral center is balanced or not, you can determine this by understanding your emotions. Now. What are emotions exactly? Um, emotions can be defined as your state of mind, um, your perception around a situation, um, the opinion you form around it, and ultimately that opinion determines how you feel about anything. So somebody can um, take getting laid off of work as a negative thing, like everything bad happens to me. I can't handle this. I don't know what is going to happen next. Or they can see it as a good thing, as in now that I'm laid off from work, I can now pursue a career that's more fulfilling. I can be around like-minded individuals who accept me as who I am, and I can live a happier life because of this. So um, this is um, just a nice example of how your perception and your emotions around a certain situation can determine your outlook on life. Now, um, talking about your sacral chakra, um, you can tell if you have a balanced sacral chakra um, by just taking your taking into consideration your approach to life. Are you overall pleasant? Um, are you a yes person, not like a people pleaser, but um, when you are presented with certain things, do you say like, oh, you know what? Yes, I wouldn't mind trying that. Um, but even if you do say no to certain things, um, is your no like, Ugh, no, I'm not going to do this. Or, you know, um, it can be like, you know, I appreciate you reaching out to me for this um, opportunity, but I must decline because this doesn't align with me. You know, there are two different ways you can approach a no and your emotions around that can determine whether your sacral chakra is balanced or not. Now, people with a balanced sacral chakra tend to have a win-win attitude. They tend to believe that life is for them. Um, like, not necessarily that the life is full of rainbows and unicorns, but they understand the ebbs and flows of life. And they always understand that things are working out for their um, highest good. Now, um, other telltale signs that you have a balanced sacral chakra is you are respectable with your word choices and you tend to take into consideration how the words you say can help um, build a relationship or break a relationship 
and you don't try to put people down. Some people, if they're in a bad mood, they will make sure everybody else is in a bad mood. And if they feel some type of way, um, they will let it be known. And unless they are happy, unless they are happy, nobody should be happy. And this is a sign of a blocked sacral chakra. Now, okay, so other signs that you may have a blocked sacral chakra um, include having excessive boredom and low motivation, um, having no signs of hope in your life, being listless towards life in general, um, replying that you may seem like life is too much effort, um, you may feel overall depressed, have signs of emotional instability, there may be body language um, cues, you may fold your arms, may come off as um, guarded towards others. There's a lot of different things and there are different causes of blocked sacral chakras. Um, specifically going through extreme stressful situations such as um, you may have been dealing with a big loss in your life and the emotional overwhelmment, I don't even know if that's a word, being emotionally overwhelmed can cause you to block off your chakra just because it's just too much for your body to um, handle. And so your body just shuts off and doesn't allow you to feel certain emotions. In the same sense, you may possibly be going through a very stressful time overall, just like super stressful. Maybe you're going through school that's super stressful, dealing with um, stressful situation in your love life or amongst friends. Um, work could be super stressful and could be overwhelming and you just have a lot on your plate that just makes it super stressful and you may have been in um, a certain family dynamic where you just see people have a lot on their plate obviously super stressed out but you just see them continuously working hard and pushing through hustle mentality oh you know i'm just gonna i just gotta push through and oftentimes your body will tend to shut down emotionally just as a way to protect itself simply because it knows that if it keeps going in this um at this rate it could break down it could have a um what is that it could have um, a heart attack a stroke even a mental breakdown and i know in my family i have seen um close family members go through mental breakdowns simply because they did not allow themselves the time to rest simply because a lot was on their plates and they didn't have the support system to help them the way that they needed help. So <clears throat> um, sometimes your body will most definitely shut off your sacral chakra or shut off your emotions just to protect itself. And this is another reason why I say our bodies are so, 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 so smart. And you may think that your body is working against you. In actuality, it is because you don't know what's best for your body. Like your body knows how to maintain equilibrium. That's why you don't have to ask your heart to keep pumping while you're asleep, to keep breathing while you're asleep. And this is why um, sometimes you're subconscious brain is working through problems um while you're focusing on other things um you know how sometimes you have that oh yeah i have that perfect answer as soon as i step away from me trying to find the answer you know that's just your subconscious brain working for you so sometimes you have to let your body do what it needs to do and the best way that happens is if you allow it to rest so um, <clears throat> moving right along, another thing that can cause your sacral chakra to be blocked is, or are, long periods of illness. So over time, long periods of illness can lead to the sacral chakra 
to shut down as the body feels it has reached its capacity to how much physical suffering it can handle or give its attention to. And so this is why sometimes taking a holistic approach to your health is necessary when it comes to healing because you could be going to the doctor, you could be taking all of these different types of medication, running all of these tests, and nothing is helping. Nothing is giving you the answers or the relief that you need. And so you're not changing your lifestyle factors. You're not changing your diet to the way that will allow your body to heal or reset. You're not allowing yourself to reduce stress and you're not allowing yourself to rest from work so that you can allow your body to feel better or to de-stress um <clears throat> and so you're just going off of what the doctors are telling you and i know they have their best interests at heart but sometimes you have to follow your intuition follow your heart and let your body do the work and sometimes that allows the body to heal the way it's supposed to and this is why understanding how your body works how the body actually heals itself instead of just allowing medication to do it for you because your body is trying to do it this is why um, there's a lot of immunosuppressive medication out there and what immunosuppressive medication does is it stops your body's immune system from working over time and it uh, and the medicine goes through and does the work but when you get off that medication or when you're on the medication, side effects may happen. And those side effects are usually um, infections and other illnesses and things. And that's simply because your immune system isn't working because the medicine is stopping your immune system from working. And typically when you get off that medication, the issues come back. And so you're stuck on it. And so the best thing is with holistic um, methods is that it allows your body, you're playing essentially a medical detective or you're working with a medical detective, like a naturopathic doctor or a um, holistic nutritionist or um, some holistic specialist that will help you get to the root cause of your issues. And so instead of being the medicine that stops your body from working and allowing the medicine to do your work, um, the holistic practitioner will figure out where the root cause of the problem is and work with you using epigenetics, um, nutrigenetics or nutrigenomics or all three, which is what I do, um, to allow your body to do what it's supposed to do. Because when you allow your body to do what it's supposed to do, it thrives, not only mentally, not only physically, but spiritually as well. So <laughs> back to the sacral chakra. Another thing that can affect your sacral chakra or your emotion center in your body and spirit <laughs> is being in the wrong job. So most definitely the wrong job can affect your sacral chakra or affect your emotions. So you may have found yourself, okay, so just because a job is makes gives you good benefits, gives you good money, um, it's a good environment doesn't mean it's the right job for you because there's a lot of people who stay at jobs just for the stability but ultimately they're not happy and if somebody asks them like did you want to work this for the rest of your life it's like yeah I could but I mean it's I mean I could it's not like oh my gosh I wake up every morning and I'm happy to go to work like if that's you you're blessed congratulations but if you're one of those people who has to put on a face and be like everything is fine because all of my needs are met but deep down you're not really happy um you may break down privately um when you are alone or in your car because ultimately you're not a hundred percent happy you're you feel as though there's a piece of you missing and your sacral chakra or your emotions may be cut off while you're at work but when you go and do other things, you may have hobbies, you may 
um, go to events that light your light <laughs> that just lights you on fire that just totally opens you up and so ultimately what happens is your sacral chakra is blocked while you're at work and that could be eight hours a day 40 hours a week and on the weekends that's when your sacral chakra that's when your emotions are alive and when you think about it the amount of hours that you spend with a blocked shock a blocked sacral chakra closing off your emotions compared to when you're actually allowing yourself to feel happy healthy and whole and just really appreciate life that's not a good balance ideally you would want to be able to um have your sacral chakra have your emotions fully engaged at all times to be able because i know there are so many people who <clears throat> have toxic bosses, have toxic co-workers, have both, even have toxic employee, in, not employees, but toxic um, clients. Because I remember one time I, it was holiday season in San Francisco and I went to go get a package because um, this is when I had my PO box. And so I would have everything sent to my package because I did not trust the people to have my stuff <laughs> sent to my, um, my home address. So I was living in downtown San Francisco and so one day I went and I waited in line and the service that these um, post office workers were enduring um, from the people who were just impatient they're rude they're pushy and they they were just horrible and so one day I went to go get my package and uh, I had ordered a lot of stuff and turns out all of my items were returned except for one, which was a purse. And I went to ask about it and um, the worker um, was like, oh, well, I saw the package and it was through UPS. And so we sent it back to UPS and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So ultimately, I realized that the person that the worker who I was talking to had stolen my purse. <laughs> and sent back all of my other packages and so i had to reorder everything and ultimately i did not get my purse i had to get a refund for my purse i would rather had the purse but i was just like you know what these workers go through hell especially during holiday season so i would have her take it up with the lord and i'm just gonna get my money back and find another purse because i cannot I cannot find that purse. You know, my name is Jeannie Jaguar on social media. And so it was a leopard print because they don't really have a lot of Jaguar print, but it was a leopard print purse and it was gray and purple. And it was just so cute. Cause I was like, that is me. That is me. <laughs> but anywho, um, yeah, so that's just an example of how your job um, can close off your emotions and make you feel like you can't um, feel, but you go through other means to tap into your emotions. So um, this is not me trying to smash the you, the post office workers, you know, do your job. But if you are not happy, you don't have to steal in order to make yourself happy, you know, find another job. Find something that makes you happy. And another thing about having a blocked <clears throat> chakra, telltale sign that you have a blocked chakra, blocked sacral chakra would be, <laughs> this is not funny, but um, would be if you say that I would kill myself if only I had the energy to do it. Or you often feel like your feelings are being blocked, unheard, ignored or you're being disrespected on a constant basis um another thing um you may have a lost identity of who you are you can say i don't even know who i am anymore because you may have spent your entire life trying to fulfill other people's expectations of you striving for goals that aren't really yours um, granted they're yours but you're just doing it because it's like people will be happy for me if I do this or I have to do this for my family or I have to do this for 
my kids. I have, I have to do this. Not that I don't want to, but I have to. So these are Telltale Signs to have a blood sacral chakra. Now, you may be crass, you may be loud, you may only listen to respond, combative, you may be addicted to trauma, okay? Am I the problem? Am I the drama? Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I You may have a blocked <laughs> sacral chakra. Um, now, some people with block chakras have a tendency to create drama in their lives where there is no drama. And I know I was in a relationship with a guy who um, was like this. And so he would often start arguments just to win them. Because if he wasn't happy, nobody should be happy. And that was a tell to son that he had a blocked sacral chakra. Now, people with a blocked sacral chakra do not like feeling like they are out of a they're out of control of a situation. They always like to be controlled. They always like to know the time. If um, somebody is doing something or if they don't know what's going on, they just like to be in control. And so this can wreak havoc on the people's lives around them and it may make it difficult for other people to be around. This is why a lot of people with blocked sacral chakras have a hard time making friends. They may not have a lot of friends. They may not have a good love life. They may live a life that's ultimately alone or just have a few set of people who don't really, who really fuck with them. So now here's another thing. Do not get confused with a blocked sacral chakra for an overactive sacral chakra. Now, like I said before, in childhood, you may have been discouraged from feeling your emotions, so you would shut them off. Um, you may be in a job where expressing your emotions is unprofessional, and so, you may be put in situations where you may feel overwhelmed or stressed out or even where people do petty stuff and so instead of like <sighs> expressing your emotions and allowing it to um come out you may feel the need to bottle it in or compartmentalize and this is not healthy because i know there are people clients that i've had who had um overactive or blocked sacral chakras because you can go from being blocked to full-blown overactive and then um, this can make it difficult for you to trust but anyway I've had clients who would have feelings and ultimately like well my life is like this and so even though I feel like this and even though I feel guilty I feel unhappy I feel unworthy of the life that I have I'm just going to suck it up and compartmentalize these feelings and just put on a happy face. That's not healthy. And more issues will arise if you continue to do this. Now, um, when you have an overactive sacral chakra, um, you can find yourself um, constantly lashing out as a way of justifying your emotions. And you may find yourself playing the victim, having difficulty taking accountability for your actions, may constantly be in defense mode, and you may find yourself coming up with huge scams or schemes that ultimately fail and you may feel everything in an exaggerated fashion and you're also prone to mood swings and this is another reason why i feel like taking medication for your emotions and your mood is not the best approach and why a holistic approach is best 
simply because you're not getting to the root cause of the problem. Your spirit could be calling, crying, yelling, having tension tantrums, asking for help, but instead you're taking medication to numb those feelings just so you can continue doing the things that is keeping you out of spiritual alignment altogether. Just gonna throw that out there. So, um, other things that may show you have an overactive um, sacral chakra. You may have difficulty sleeping, codependency issues. You may have health issues that, do, um, more specifically stomach problems like stomach ulcers, digestion issues, and you may also have problems at work. Now, common things you may say if you have an overactive sacral chakra, sacral chakra I just feel too much. I feel absolutely everything all the time. I cannot switch off my mind. It feels as if my job is killing me and I feel the whole world is against me and everybody hates me. Now, I know I have had a blocked sacral chakra and I have had an overactive sacral chakra in my life. So learning how to balance your emotions, learning how to take inventory of your emotions and learning how to effectively care for yourself mind body spirit mind body spirit is important so that you can have a balanced sacral chakra and the best way to balance your sacral chakra is to feel those feelings not only that um but to also um, tap into your inner child. Do things that make you happy, not on a temporary basis, but on an everyday basis. Strive to seek happiness every day. And when you express yourself, try to do so in a way that doesn't put others down and doesn't um, put you on a pedestal and bring other people down because you don't have to um, make others feel worse or to make yourself feel better. Because I know I've been in relationships where I allowed people to do that because I understood mentally what they were going through. And that wasn't healthy for me. And ultimately, it wasn't healthy for them because that was me enabling them to um, use unhealthy coping mechanisms to make themselves feel better. Now, here's the thing about... Um, your emotions and your spiritual self and this is why they go so hand in hand because like you don't physically see your emotions you don't hear your emotions you don't smell your emotions emotions are things that are things that you feel and they're just em embodiments like you it's just like mm, the vibes like you just got weird vibes like you just can't No, but you don't tell people what happiness looks like or feels like you just know what it is when you feel it when you're in that embodiment same thing as your spirit now uh, sorry same thing when it comes to your spirit like when you have like a spiritual awakening um, and you have these aha moments and you're going through your ascension process you don't necessarily things in your life seem normal like things will seem normal but energetically they will feel things will feel different um when you certainly when you have a certain breakthrough in your life and the depression lifts and you find your happiness back your work life may still be the same but your perception and your emotions around what happens in your work life will most definitely change i know when i was at my first um, personal training job i hated it just because my boss was rude um they were trying to stifle my money so they wanted me to work extra hard and get minimum pay 
And so energetically, I was manifesting a better job for myself. And so um, while I was nearing the end of my time at that job, my conditions did not change, but my perception around my job changed because at once I woke up and hated going to work. But when it was close to the end of my journey there, I was excited to go to work because I know that it was close to my ending and the things that affected me before no longer affected me. Like the things that bothered me no longer bothered me because I'm like, I'm not going to have to deal with this anymore. This person's petty attitude like doesn't, I mean, you can keep, you can still have that petty attitude because I know I'm leaving. I know I'm going to be gone. Like this isn't, I don't have to deal with this anymore. So. So ultimately, this is why it's so good to learn how to harness your emotions and balance. And when it comes to balancing your chakras, uh, specifically your sacral chakra, there are certain exercises you can do, such as yoga, tai chi, things that'll help you um, get back into your mind-body connection. Um, there are foods you can eat. Um, such as orange foods, citrus foods, and there are certain types of music that you can listen to, such as um, typically anything that raises your vibration, that makes you happy, and that's different for everybody. So this is why your healing journey should always be personalized to you and you specifically. And this is why I offer my Stress Alchemy course to help you, well, yeah, I offer my Stress Alchemy course and my coaching program to go along with my course to help individuals find that personalized program that will help them balance their mind, body, and spirit so that they can overcome chronic stress and anxiety and learn how to maintain those conditions for the rest of their life. Because I mean, like you can go to therapy for the rest of your life. Um, you can get a personal trainer for the rest of your life, um, but you don't have to when you know how to take care of yourself. And so if you're at that point in your life where you can just pay for people to do these things for you, by all means go right ahead. But for people who don't want to, <laughs> then this course and coaching program would be perfect and ideal for you because it'll help you learn how to do for yourself so you can worry about other things. So it won't be like, a, oh, okay, I can't work out this week because my trainer isn't here, my app isn't working, or I can't go to the gym and so I don't know what to do. Or I don't know how to cook, so I don't know what to do. Or when I'm feeling sick and under the weather, um, I'm just out of commission because I don't know what to do. Um, my stress document course can show you how to take care of yourself so that when you do get sick when because like you can't foolproof your life but when things happen you'll know how to bounce back and recover a lot more fat a lot quicker than what you would if you didn't know how to take care of yourself so um i hope this helps i will in the future go over more different um chakras imbalances and how to balance them in the future if you're interested, so just let me know in the comments and I will continue, but I hope this helps.